Okay, welcome. Today this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. I've got an Olympia SM2 that we are getting ready to put on our uh, shop. And so I'm going to show you around. And uh, this is a 1951. So some of the SM2s, so there's a little bit of discrepancy. Um, this is an SM2, but some of the SM2 started moving their logos to this front panel. But this is an earlier one, and um, even though it says by the serial number that the logo should be here, it's not. So I'm thinking the database is wrong about when they switched over the logos uh, because this is later, but this is a later serial number, not by a lot just by about 10,000. Um, and so this was probably one of the last typewriters that had the logo up here. But anyway, this is a 1951 SM2 with the older logo and we're gonna show you around. So right here, I'm gonna first of all start from the back and work my way up. I'm gonna lift this up And you can see, here's your margins right here. This does not have a tabulator on this typewriter, just the margins. And you just slide them back and forth. I'm going to put this down. Your paper guide, oops, I need to straighten this out, don't I? Okay, so then your paper guide is right here. You just lift it up or down. The other um, SMs, you have a button, but this one is just, um, and this one is, gets messy back there. But this one, um, you just have to manually lift up and down. Your carriage release is gonna be right here on the right side. And um, you have the bell there, but it looks like it doesn't always work, just sometimes. Okay, so we'll, when we type, we'll see if that releases or that bell will um, ding. So this is your paper release. This button on the side, when you turn your handle, if you push the button in, it releases the uh, rollers that makes it free so you can do some fine adjusting. So you just push it in and turn the roller. On the left side, you're gonna see your line indicator and that just means when you hit the return handle, it's gonna advance one, two, or three lines. This uh, back here is also the paper release. And then um, on all Olympias, there is a carriage lock. So if you move your carriage kind of center and then hit the lock, and I always like to, I push down the carriage release and then it just kind of falls in place. This is great for if you're gonna be transporting it or anything like that. And then again, when you get your Olympia, if you buy Olympia from anybody, almost always they're gonna have the carriage locked and then you just flip it up and that'll release the carriage there for you. Okay, I'm gonna move that to the left. There's that bell again. I'm gonna pop open the top in here. You can see the ribbons and we've put in a metal spool for you. You can use a universal ribbon. Ribbons can be found on our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. We rolled a fresh ribbon on these metal spools. And the nice thing about metal spools is you get extra ribbon, lots of extra ribbon. So this is gonna last you a long time. So when you get to the end of the spool, reverse the direction, cause there's a lot of ink in these ribbons. And you do that by just, if you look, I call them these double barrels. If you look at these double barrels, you just push them and you can do it from either side, doesn't really matter. And that reverses the direction of your ribbon. And you should be able to reverse the direction dozens of times before you need to replace the ribbon. Um, this is your uh, touch selector. So it just determines how hard these bars are gonna strike your paper. It's just a personal preference. Okay, I'm gonna close that lid and show you a couple things. Your color selector is here. I told you that's your carriage release, this button, this lever down here. This button with the four dots, that is your margin release. So when you get to your margin, everything's gonna stop on the typewriter. You can't do anything. Hit that margin release, and then you can keep going. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in a uh, paper and do our typing demo. All right, 
great. So you just set, this is your paper guide here. Just set your paper right against that. Turn the handle and then pull out the uh, this bar while you're bringing that up. Pop that down. I always go halfway up to make sure um, I'm somewhat even, not exactly right. So I will adjust it a little bit here. And sometimes the adjustments is so no, that's really good. All right, so now we're ready and I am gonna double check my margins and bring them in a little bit. Okay, so this is a 1951 Olympia SM2. Okay, let's keep going. It's on red, so I'm going to switch it up to black. Oh, when you make a mistake, you just hit backspace. There's the bell. Okay, let's try all caps. So the bell is now working when I'm typing. For some reason, it didn't work all the time, as you saw before. Jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, let's uh, let's try another sentence. Okay, so let's go ahead. So this actually typed very well. However, I will say this typewriter likes a heavy hand. So because it likes the heavy hand, I am going to adjust the touch selector. I'm going to bring it all the way here and see if that makes a difference because I was having to press down really hard. Not really hard, but harder than I normally would. Okay, let's go ahead and test all the keys. So yeah, um, that touch selector actually did make a little bit of difference. I can feel it. Um, and so you just put it where um, where it works for you. So the Olympias are usually pretty sought after. This is uh, in the SM series especially. People love. Now this is a very early version of the SM. The SM1 is the earliest, obviously, and had browned keys. This is um, this is the first in the series where they use the square plastic keys. So um, let's do red. This works very well. Um, good for long writing projects. Um, these are mechanically sound. So on this one, I will uh, add one thing. And so you can, I'll take a close-up photo of this. I will add one thing on this. This also came to us in really rough shape. And so you will probably, um, we have you will probably need on, it will need ongoing um, kind of cleaning. You know, sticky keys is actually very common for vintage typewriters. So we recommend keeping uh, mineral spirits and Q-tips on hand. And so as your keys, uh, when they're this old, they get a lot of gunk in there. Um, so that's why it's good to have a dust cover because dust and dirt gets down inside and it makes the keys sticky. So even though we've soaked and cleaned this, as you use it, it's working out some of that gunk. And so if you keep a Q-tip and mineral spirits on hand and you just, when it gets a little stiff or sticky, just wipe that key down 
and you'll just start working and pretty soon you won't have to do that as often and it'll just start working out all of that gunk that has accumulated over time so when you're not using it keep it either in its case or get a typewriter cover which we also have on our websites and put the cover over it so that the dust and the grime from that's in the air doesn't settle down onto the keys there um, and one more thing because I see it as I have it open if you're looking for a serial number on your SM2 if you move your carriage to the right and look down here your serial number is going to be right there okay hope you enjoyed this video have a great day